Hello again. I'm back by popular demand with an update on my bioactive arid leopard gecko vivarium. I discussed the research behind this setup in part one, and I showed a time-lapse tutorial on how to make it in part two. I will link both of those videos above if you missed them and are interested in watching. If you've been enjoying watching my videos, please go ahead and leave a like and consider subscribing. Uh, it helps the channel grow and lets me know that I should keep devoting time to making these videos. My arid vivarium is about five months old now, and it's doing very well. My gecko is doing great, though she mostly hides in her burrow. I will at some point uh, probably be redoing the burrow to make it more accessible if I need to check on her. Right now I have to lure her out with food or dig up the whole burrow, which is mildly annoying. The plants are also doing very well. I did have to replace my sage plant. If you recall from part one, I originally used this sage because local COVID closures prevented me from obtaining the Mojave Desert native plants that I had originally wanted for this setup. So I was making do with similar plants that I had access to at the time. The sage cultivar I ended up using went partially deciduous, and though it was still alive and was putting off new growth, it just didn't look very good. I recently had the opportunity to buy a California buckwheat, which is the plant that I had wanted to use to begin with, so I decided to swap it out for the sage. It has been in here for almost a month now, and so far so good. I'm hoping that it puts off new growth and eventually will flower. Otherwise, my Dudleya are doing okay. They're coastal species because I haven't been able to get my hands on an actual uh, desert Dudleya, which is the Dudleya saxosa, which is a species that I think would probably do best in this environment. If I get the opportunity and uh, can get my hands on one, I may swap it out for one or both of these coastal species, but for now they're putting off new growth and they seem to be doing okay. My verbena has been putting off flowers this whole time. Uh, my native UC Verde buffalo grass has been doing very well and I planted some grass seeds that I collected in the Mojave which have grown into wild grasses towards the back of the enclosure. My baby Joshua tree continues to put off new growth as well and seems to be doing well. I also purchased an envelope of California native wildflower seeds that I have sprinkled throughout the enclosure and some of them have begun to sprout, so that's exciting. Uh, we'll see which, if any, are able to survive until they actually bloom. I'm not actually sure how many uh, different species are in the mix, so we'll see uh, what takes and, and what I end up getting out of it. Really what I want to talk about in this video that will likely be of most use to hobbyists trying an arid bioactive setup for themselves is cleanup crew. I've seeded this enclosure with two species of isopods, Porcellianides prunosus and Armadilladium vulgare. Initially I thought this enclosure was too dry for them and I did not see many of them in the first few weeks after the setup, so I assumed that they had all died, but this was not the case. I had a couple of viewers from the American Southwest let me know that they regularly see both of these species in the Sonoran and Mojave deserts, and in my setup I noticed that many isopods become visible as soon as I spray the vivarium. They appear to have holed up under hardscape and under the water dish, and are reproducing in this setup with many juveniles present. Though the temperate springtails that most vivarium suppliers sell, and most hobbyists keep, uh, failed to thrive in this environment and appear to have died off, a very large species of silver-colored springtail has become active in this setup. I'm not sure of the species, and my attempts to isolate them for culture have thus far been unsuccessful. But they are very active in the heat and even on dry surfaces, and I suspect that they are a desert-dwelling species that hitched a ride on the unsterilized, wild, collected desert materials that I placed into this enclosure. I have one microscope image I was able to take, and if I'm successful at isolating the species, I will attempt to have it identified. If anyone watching knows springtails and uh, has an idea of what I'm dealing with, please leave me a message in the comments. The mealworm beetles that I put into the enclosure did not survive for long, but the superworm beetles have thrived. They are actively reproducing, and they've actually become so numerous that I've had to remove several from the setup. I see them roaming about the vivarium far more frequently than my gecko, who generally only comes out after the lights go out. Unlike my other setups, I have had to add additional organic materials for my cleanup crew to consume, as the plants in the arid setup grow much slower than I'm used to in my tropical setups, and so they don't uh, contribute enough to the leaf litter on their own. I have put small amounts of oatmeal down for the beetles, and I will also put in slices of fruit or veggies that I'm eating at home. I have also added crushed up magnolia leaves as leaf litter for the cleanup crew. I think my cleanup crew takeaways so far are that some species of isopods do fairly well in an arid setup if you have moist retreats for them, and beetles do so well that you might want to think twice about adding them at all. I can't say for sure what the larvae are eating, but I think it's safe to say they're probably not helping the roots of my plants. As for springtails, uh, life finds a way, so to speak, and with the addition of some wild materials, a species that is suited for the environment has managed to find its way inside. I'm not sure how long I will leave this particular vivarium set up like this. It's doing well so far, but I have plans to build a new vivarium from scratch that will allow me to do more with the lighting and have better access to my gecko's hides. 
I think it's safe to say that um, it'll be around for at least a few more months. And uh, so far I consider this project to be a success. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, go ahead and leave me a message in the comments below. Uh, take care friends, go get vaccinated when you can, and um, hopefully we can all start going outside again soon. Bye.